They say that money is power, so it makes sense that most of the richest cartoon characters are power-hungry villains. Not all of them, though, which begs the question, who is the richest cartoon character, be they hero or villain, and how do they spend all that high-budget, crisply animated dough? Hi, I'm Hey Lizbeth with Channel Frederator, and today we're going to be scaling fictional mountains of moolah to measure which one is the tallest and which cartoon characters are the richest of the rich. We've got a long way to the top, so let's get started. Number 12, Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians, $1 billion. Cruella de Vil, who boasts one of the greatest songs in the history of Disney villainy, starts this list off with a net worth of a mere 1 billion. At least, that's what Forbes said in 2005. Though exactly how Cruella has all that money is up for debate. Her creepy, distended mansion, Hell Hall, appears to have come into her possession through inheritance. In the live action film, she's a successful fashion mongol, but pfft, who cares about versions of things starting? real people. In any case, she obviously has enough money to back a nasty smoking habit, lots of eerily specific body length fur coats, and to buy at least 15 puppies at once. Number 11, the Northwest family, Gravity Falls, $1.2 billion. Frederator's rough estimate, Preston and Priscilla Northwest, along with their daughter Pacifica, are a new spin on the Cruella model, spoiled and selfish, yet redeemable. But the Northwest, like Cruella, have an incredibly exaggerated sense of entitlement. Their wealth stems purely from the fact that they are descended from Gravity Falls' supposed founder, Nathaniel Northwest. Even though Dipper and Mabel unearthed a huge conspiracy surrounding Nathaniel Northwest, the Northwest name tends to go unchallenged, and the family often makes a point of lording their wealth and privilege over others, going as far as to lock the townspeople out of their annual dinner party. The Northwests are a legacy family, replete with glamour and power. Their parties are like a ghost-ridden Gatsby party that shows the less fun side of the American dream. Forbes says Jay Gatsby is worth $1 billion, but we decided to ante up the Northwest's net worth a little bit. You know, given that the family's wealth has only built upon itself generations after, um, <laughs> founding Gravity Falls. Number 10, Squilliam Fancy Son III, SpongeBob SquarePants. $1.6 billion, Frederator's rough estimate. At first glance, you might think the wealthiest citizen of Bikini Bottom is Mr. Krabs. However, this assumption is a red herring, pun intended. No, the richest sea creature is definitely Squilliam Fancy Son III, Squidward's arch rival from band class. Squilliam's wealth is even bigger than his unibrow. His house is literally two of Squidward's houses stacked on top of each other, plus a little veranda tower thing. He owns a private jet, a yacht, a gold toilet, an imported gilded doorknob for decoration only, a custom 180-foot statue of his unibrow made out of gilded doorknobs, and a balloon slash casino. Given that gold is worth $1,250, $56 an ounce, we estimate that the statue alone probably costs between 8 and 10 million. And that's a conservative estimate. Plus, any attempt that we made to research how much a balloon slash casino would cost was probably taxing and inconclusive. Hundreds and hundreds of millions, at least. So yeah, he's doing well for himself, even though we don't really know exactly what it is he does. However, given that a balloon slash casino would probably cost at least 500 million, and that Squilliam's reach doesn't quite have as much property as our number 9 contender, we think that the owner of everyone's favorite unibrow probably has about 1.6 billion. Number 9, C. Montgomery Burns, The Simpsons, $1.8 billion. Surprised to see Springfield's notoriously wealthy and conniving businessman toward the bottom of this list? So were we. But the season 20 episode, The Burns and the Bees, pins Mr. Burns' fortune at exactly 1,800,037,022. Granted, that's subject to fluctuation especially given that he lost his whole fortune a couple of times. And let's face it, nuclear power isn't exactly rising on the market. But given that he owns, among other things, multiple stadiums, the concert hall and the opera house, the state prison, and his own university, his presence and influence over Springfield are alarmingly potent, just like the chemical effects of his nuclear plant. Number 8, Gomez Adams, The Adams Family, $2 billion. The Adams Family is one of those properties that seems to have had its chance at every iteration possible. A live-action TV show, live-action films, two different animated series, a Broadway show. Basically, the Adams 
are America's favorite bazaar and macabre billionaires. The two billion estimate is again provided by our friends at Forbes, but you can easily start to see how the family's wealth is patched together. The Adams patriarch, Gomez, is descended from Castilian royalty and British aristocrats, so some of his wealth is from inheritance. Yet most of it is done through dumb luck investments and owning random businesses like a buzzard farm and a tombstone factory. Gomez and his family tend to be more impulsive and carefree with their wealth than most of the other members on this list, which, among with their weird, weird taste in almost everything, makes them stand out. I mean, they stand out for other reasons too, like the thing, but this definitely adds to that list. Number seven, a tie between Richie Rich from Richie Rich and Montana Max from Tiny Toons Adventures. $5.8 billion, an estimate on Max's fortune. Once upon a time in the 1950s, there was a comic book character named Richie Rich who lived in Richville and whose middle name was a dollar sign. Hmm, I wonder what they were going for. But the poor little rich boy is a time-tested beloved character who expanded into multiple films and two different animated TV shows. Richie's father, Richard Rich Sr., is a big-time business conglomerate with an apparently poor taste in middle names. Technically, that 5.8 billion Ford estimate is owned by Richie's parents, not Richie himself. A technical rule of inheritance the Baudelaire orphans know quite well. But luckily, even though he reaps the benefits of having insanely wealthy parents, Richie has a heart of gold. The same cannot be said for Montana Max from Tiny Toons Adventures, who's basically just Darth Richie. We tie Montana Max here because no one inside Tiny Toons or out was kind enough to give us a good estimate of his net worth. But like Richie, Max is an only child of wealthy parents and lives in a huge mansion. Unlike Richie, Max is the kind of super spoiled rich kid who thinks his wealth makes him better than everyone else and constantly uses his riches to his advantage. And also has a doorbell that chimes money. It's worth noting that Max's butler is named Grovely, but Richie's is Cadbury the perfect butler. So yeah, more points to Richie. As the Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader of fictional characters with money, we're letting Richie and Max share spot number seven. I certainly hope the Richies of the world prevail. Number six, Carter Pewterschmidt, Family Guy. $7.2 billion. Initially, we were planning on welcoming Peter Griffin to this list. After all, he owns a Peter Copter and the Hinden Peter before he crashed both of them. And he was somehow able to make his property into its own country. Uh, before he ceded that. However, Carter Pewterschmidt has a ranker. Well, had a ranker. Which is way better than a combination of all three of Peter's weird triumphs. Also, Carter is clearly wealthier, so that's gotta count for something. As the head of Pewterschmidt Industries and U.S. Steel and the brief two-time owner of CNN, our financial savvy Forbes friends pinned Peter Schmidt down at 7.2 billion. Sadly, Carter oozes the stereotypical conservative billionaire businessman vibe, valuing money over love and family. But, you know, props to the rancor decision. Number five, Bruce Wayne, Batman. 9.2 billion dollars. Of course, Batman is on this list. How could a man who inherited his family's incredibly successful business empire not be on this list? The vastly influential influential and crazy high-tech Wayne Enterprises is valued to be worth about 9.2 billion. I'm sure Brucey put in a lot of that elbow grease himself, but some people just have all the luck. Er, well, kind of. Not to mention that he has enough riches to build a super high-tech bat cave in his basement with a freaking Batmobile and a bunch of other crazy vehicles in it. Face it, we all love Batman, but Batman only exists because Bruce Wayne is super wealthy. He doesn't have any superpowers, so money is Batman's superpower. Basically money and vengeance. <coughs> Wayne can afford state-of-the-art customized ultra fancy gadgets and a sweet high-tech lair beneath his giant mansion. And all of that was built in secret. That's all kind of what makes Batman Batman. So let's be thankful that his heart is in the right place, unlike our next contender. Number four, Lex Luthor. Luther, Superman. $10.1 billion. So there you have it. LexCorp is worth more than Wayne Enterprises, unfortunately. Tough break, Brucey. Can I keep calling him Brucey? Unlike Bruce Wayne, who inherited his empire, LexCorp was built from the ground up by Luther himself. And if you thought Wayne Enterprises was large, LexCorp is massive. So large that people who work for LexCorp don't even know they're working for LexCorp. 
Like Wayne, Luther's main superpower is his incredible wealth, though he's also got sheer political power and brains on his side. His vendetta against Superman is allowed to continue simply because he can afford to. And, you know, because he views Superman as a threat to his megalomaniacal version of Metropolis's future. Point is, he's rich. Number 3. Mom from Futurama $15.7 billion Mom is one of the wealthiest people of the year 3000. No, not your mom. She's probably long gone by then. Sorry. I mean mom, as in the owner of MomCorp, a giant conglomerate which spans across the universe. As if being the active executive of such a giant, profitable corporation wasn't enough, mom owns 99.7% of MomCorp's shares, thereby securing basically all of its profits for herself. One of the most notable sub-business of MomCorp is Mom's Friendly Robot Company, which makes the vast majority of Earth's robots. Sounds expansive. In public, Mom may seem sweet with the fat suit and all, but deep down, she's just another one of those many greedy, money-obsessed, megalomaniacal business tycoons gracing this list. Granted, having the entire universe as your market instead of just one city or even one planet gives you a little bit of a leg up. Side note, you might remember that one time Fry realized that a thousand years worth of interest on 99 cents meant he had 4.3 billion, but he squandered all that wealth on anchovies and Ted Danson's skeleton. Sorry, Fry. No billionaire's club for you. Number 2. Emperor Cusco from The Emperor's New Groove Unknown, but probably lots. It would be incredibly difficult to estimate how much the fictional Cusconian Empire would have been worth, but as its emperor, Cusco would have been the spearhead of it all. And saying it's hard to say is more than just mere laziness on our part. Cusco's empire was inspired by the Incas, and history lesson time, despite the Incas having the largest and wealthiest empire in South American history, they had no marketplaces or physical currency. So while there were certainly nobles with more wealth than the common class, exactly what that wealth translated to was way more complicated than a monetary value. Suffice it to say, Cusco has a big palace and lots of gold. He throws great one-man dance parties and could afford to institute a university for himself. So he's very wealthy indeed. Number 1. Scrooge McDuck from Disney's DuckTales $50 billion Remember when we said gold was worth $1,256 an ounce? Scrooge McDuck has a three cubic acre building called the Money Bin whose only purpose is to be filled with piles of gold. Piles that Scrooge can swim in. Piles that Scrooge can ski in. And if you can both swim and ski in your gold, it should be no surprise that you top this list. Scrooge is a classic rags to riches case. He started out in Glasgow shining shoes and then got himself a job as a cabin boy on a ship making its way to America at the ripe age of 13. Scrooge seems to have made his fortune from a combination of mining, land acquisition, some shrewd business, and plenty of good old-fashioned adventuring. One episode of the old DuckTales stated that Scrooge wealth amounts to 607 trillion, 386 zillion, 947 trillion, 522 billion dollars and 36 cents. Forbes went a little more realistic, estimating it at 65.4 billion in 2013. However, the price of gold has actually dropped since then, so an updated estimate of their number would be 49.2 billion, if all of Scrooge's wealth was in pure gold which it isn't. So we gave him the benefit of the doubt and rounded up. I guess Scrooge deserves it. And there you have it, our countdown of the richest cartoon characters. Did we miss someone? Which rich life would you choose? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe. Cause remember, Frederator loves you. Frederator!